Shabbat Shalom, everyone that's uh, watching us here today at the Covenant Calendar. Uh, this is a um, part of the ministry of Torah to the Tribes <clears throat> that deals with the calendar and how it was and how it was ordained by Yahuwah from the beginning. And uh, this through this calendar, um, it helps us realign with um, His commandment, His um, declaration of how we're supposed to keep our days and and when and and just allows us to be in a cut with him. And that is part of the restoration of the 12 tribes is for us to be in one alignment with him in one accord in all things. Um, so as um, as Israel, we, we can um, participate on this set apart days at the same times. Um, very important, very important as, as we are coming into the seventh uh, mille uh, millennium. Um, and also we deal with the prophetic, um, and that one is uh, usually done with, with um, Brandon much more. Um, and uh, so we're very blessed to, to have all of you today watching, and I hope you all are blessed and edified by this teaching of Noah's Flood that uh, we'll be doing today. Um, this will be a part two teaching to this, this week. Uh, we are going to go in towards, you know, the beginning part of uh, the flood uh, when the rain started coming down up until about 150 days after there's a lot of detail there so i just wanted to go uh, to go over with all of you with that and i hope that you all enjoy it and there's also some prophetic things that happen uh during that this time that um helps us see um who's behind it all who, who was the author that made this flood happen and and uh, the the people involved and how he used them even their names to prophesy what would what was to come well i hope you all are blessed by this and uh, if you're not joining us live i do recommend that you go to torah to the tribes.com forward slash connect and and sign up for this platform there are other platforms there that you more than welcome to sign up for and you will receive weekly invites uh, we have Friday and Saturday or Shabbat morning teachings, fellowship and gatherings. So we'd love to have you. If you have any questions, you know, to just even for questions or whatnot, great place to do it. Um, so I hope I hope you all y'all can do that for those who haven't signed up already. All right, so well, let's go ahead and get started with the presentation. All right. So as I said, this is part one of a part two teaching of the Noah's flood timeline. So we will go ahead um, and just start off with some of the people that were involved um, or some of the Malkasetic priests that were actually involved. Because um, as we know, the even Noah was um, the eighth Malkasetic on the tenth generation. So, uh, and for those who haven't watched or or have a, a um, haven't been following um, some of Matthew's teaching, I do recommend it. Really gives you a lot, so much insight about uh, the how the line of Adam, who who the kingdom was given to, uh, and lost it because of sin. Uh, and through his line, we know that Mashiach came, but that's where. He was the first priest, and, and he was uh, um, created by Yahuwah. And then on through Noah, Shem, um, you know, all the way to Moshe. So anyway, wonderful teachings there. And I hope that, um, that you can also get a chance to watch those. So we're going to discuss the timeline of Noah's uh, flood. Now, uh, we'll start off with... Um, the very first scripture will be Genesis 5, 27. And I'll read. So all the days of Methuselah. And who was Methuselah? He was the son of Enoch. He was also the father of Lam Lamech and the grandfather of Noah. Uh, where 900, uh, and he was uh, 969 years old when he died. 969 years old. The oldest man uh, to have ever been recorded in history and and uh, in, in the Bible. So um, 
I understand that there is even um, in, in the first century there was even like diets that were made after him in his name to uh, to to be able to be, want to live longer. And so a lot of a lot of their dietary requirements required fruits and vegetables. And this was even recorded, like I believe, in the book of the Essenes in the early first century. Now, the, this, uh, the chronology of Adam to Noah, uh, that, that um, it's the best one that I was able to find was through the Masoretic text, which if you were, take, if you were to take the, from, the, from Adam, okay, to, um, to the flood, we're looking at six, uh, 1656 years from Adam. And uh, Methuselah also uh, was, you know, he died also on this very first, on this year, um, in the same year that the flood ca came as well. This is when Noah was 600 years old. Now, according to another study, because um, I, you know, because I, there, if, if anyone has done or looked into this, some of them, some may have found, or you have found that some will use the, the, the Masoretic and some will use the LXX, also known as Septuagint. And so that gives you a different timeline of chronolo chronological timeline. But we have to, um, we have to look at and, and, and see, well, which one is gonna stand up to truth more? Because you know, we're, we, are, we are dealing with two different completely um, chronological as far as when it comes to timeline. So I'm going to just give you a little bit of evidence why the Masoretic text, uh, I believe, is more reliable. There was, this, there was a, um, a study by the case of Septuagint chronology in, uh, in chapter 5 through 11, and the LXS primeval chronology with the creation date of 5,554. Um, and then the flood date uh, was 3298 BC, placing the flood around 2256 after creation. Now, in some LXS manuscripts of Genesis 525, Methuselah was 167 years old when he fathered Lamech, placing Methuselah's death 14 years beyond the flood. Now, the evidence strongly leads in favor that he died before the flood, of course. And we know this because eight survived, not nine. And we know their names. Now, uh, there are some discrepancies here, of course, that just don't, don't really add up, right? Um, so if, um, if the LXS was right, then there should have been an additional person in the ark, and we see that that was not the case. Now, I, I, don't, I don't agree. Um, with this chronology for, for, for that reason. And, uh, and, it, and it doesn't also fulfill the prophecy in Genesis 1, 9 and 10. And this is the second day. This is when uh, during the second day of creation, the waters were divided from under the firmament um, from the waters uh, above the firmament. The um, Yahuwah said, let there be waters under the heavens, gather them together into one place and let the dry land appear. And it was so. And as you all know, this happened on the second day. Now, this um, was prophetic to happen within the second day of the, the, the thousand years as it is a day to Yahuwah. So even the flood itself was prophesied on the six days of creation. So again, if, um, if, he, if there was to be um, uh, if this chronology, or at least the year chronology, uh, based on through Yahuwah's perspective, was going to be fulfilled in the second day, it had to happen between year 101 to year 1999. And it, and it actually did, according to the Masoretic text, but it did not according to the LXX. So that's another... A uh, proof text that we can also use to substantiate that the Masoretic is more accurate in this case. 
So what do we have um, as far as um, what do we have as far as uh, the flood? We have when did it happen, and 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 who were the people involved? And and did Yahuwah give us a sign through the names of the Melchizedek that this would happen? Well, look a little bit closer into Methuselah's name. Now, Yahuwah revealed his judgment of the flood upon the wicked at Methuselah's death. Uh, Methuselah's death would have happened on the year the flood happened, around when, when Noah was well, when, when Noah was actually 600 years old. Um, and so it happened between the equinox of year 1656 um, all the way up until the flood came. Now, he, Yahuwah cleverly incorporated this prophecy into his actual name. Uh, if you were to look at the Hebrew uh, name, uh, it means man of uh, javelin or dart. Uh, his name, his, I mean, he shall send his, his, his death. Or when he is dead, it shall be sent. What shall be sent when he's dead? <laughs> well, the flood, the judgment, the javelin. The, um, so, so the word metu in Methuselah uh, may also derive um, meaning or mot meaning death, okay? And the, the suffix means their or their death. So there was more than one. It was, it was, it was uh, his name actually is directed to many uh, were going to die as a result. Uh, this was prophesied through Methuselah's death that the flood would come and many would die from it. Now, Methuselah died when Noah was 600 years of age. And Genesis uh, 5.25 reads, when Methuselah had lived 187 years, he fathered Lamech. Methuselah lived after he fathered Lamech um, 782 years and had other sons and daughters. Thus, all the days of Methuselah were 969 years, and then he died. Uh, Lamech uh, had lived 182 years. He fathered his son, and he called him Noah, saying, Out of the ground that Yahuwah has cursed, this one shall bring us relief for our work and from the painful toil of our hands. So if no Noah was 600 years old when the flood happened, um, so Methuselah, so if you add the 187 years and then 182 years, that is how it equals out to 969 years. Um, and that means that he died at the time of the flood, right before the flood happened. Because that's when, when Noah was 600 years old. Yeah, just uh, simple math. Okay, and then we have we're gonna talk a little bit about the equinox. Uh, if you want a more detailed uh, this group, uh, study on that, um, that we have done uh, a couple uh, in the past about w what the Tekufa is and where the, what the equinox, which is very relatable because the Tekufa itself um, is that point when the year ends. There's different cycles throughout the year. There's two of them. And this is uh, the end of a cycle, according to scripture. And it's mentioned four times in the, in the scriptures, the, uh, the word tekuva. Now, when, <clears throat> when does the year actually begin? The, the Hebrew word tekuva uh, in the Jacinius lexicons means a circuit as of the sun, the course of time, of season, after the course of a year. And even if you were to look at the, uh, the word um, year, Shane just really means the circuit of the sun as well. So the year is uh, actually um, related with the cycle of this, the, the sun, which ends at the Takufa. Now, the Strong's lexicon defines it is a revolution, the sun circuit come about end. Now, the word study dictionary defines it as the turning around circuit. The root word of Tekufa is nakav, which by Strong's lexicon is defined as surround or circulate compass, go around or round. And you know, um, according to scripture, the circle of the earth. So 
you know, if you look at it from bird's eye point of view, you can see that it's it's uh, looks not only like a compass, but it's a circle. It's a circle, and this is why a lot of biblical um, scholars and and studies lead to, uh, or um, through studies, um, you you can ex uh, extrapolate that there are so many um, evidences that show that the Earth is not what NASA is telling us it is. You can do your own research on that, uh, but it's definitely worth some of your time um, and to help you, uh, you know, align our, the perspective of how the earth is formed according to the biblical perspective and not man's perspective or wisdom because the wisdom of man is foolishness to Yahuwah. So we just have to stick with his word. Now in between the two solstices are the two equinoxes, the vernal, marking the first day in the spring. Um, and that this is when um, the, the sun uh, crosses over northward from the hemisphere. And this happens usually around March 21st. Um, it can vary by day sometimes too, but uh, typically around that time. And the autumnal equinox marks the first day of uh, the fall. And this happens on around September 22nd. Um, and at this time of equinoxes, the sun rises and sets midway between the two extremes. And these are the solstices. The sun's course across the sky will travel directly above the Earth's equator. Now, these midpoints are always in the same place on the horizon. And the day of the equinox, the sun rises due east and sets due west, causing a wider shadow of no turning. Now, no matter how far north or south of the equator you are, on the equinox, the night, the night and the day are usually pretty close to equal length. Uh, and this can differ slightly uh, because sometimes of the atmospheric conditions. Uh, consider atmospheric re uh, refractions as well. Now, um, these, these, there are two equinoxes in one year period. As we know, we have the autumn and we have the um, vernal or the spring. Now this comes from a commentary by uh, Philo Judeos. You know, he was a Jewish philosopher and uh, he talks about the Noah's flood. When did, which equinox um, was uh, basically determined the beginning of the year? Was it the autumnal or was it the vernal? You're going to find some studies that will differentiate based on uh, their studies. Uh, but uh, I would have to agree that this this happened during the vernal. Uh, the deluge, and I'll, I'll quote um, uh, Philo Judeos. He says the deluge fell on the day of the vernal equinox. The first man who was produced out of the earth was also created uh, at the same season of the year. He whom the divine writer calls Adam. Okay. Um, so, and there are some other things. Uh, that also can be understood why it happened on the vernal equinox as well. And I'm going to go over some, some other things as well. That's going to help us, um, you know, hammer this down. Uh, as far as the, um, so we have here the, um, the vernal equinox. Um, now, the vernal, the, the equinox, um, for those who may not know, and remember, it's not the day, the first day of the year. And this is the last day of the year. This is the sign that the sun gives us to determine when the year ends. And once we have that sign, because you know you have the greater and lesser light for what signs and seasons. So we have the sign of the sun letting us know when the year, the, the cycle ends. And the very next day is when the year begins. So according to um, Exodus 12.2, Yahuwah told Moshe, this month should be the beginning of months, the first month of the year. Yahuwah said to Moshe and Aaron in the land of Egypt, this month shall stand at the head of your calendar. You will recon it the very first month of the year, this day in which you are going out in the month of Abib. 
Now this verse indicates that the beginning of the year commences with the month of Abib, which means month of ripe grain, year of grain that points to the spring season. The commencement of the month of Abib is the day after the vernal equinox. Now, <clears throat> there are also, there's also, um, there's two beginning points in Yahuwah's calendar. Um, there's the, uh, there, there is the, um, what someone would call the civil calendar. And that would be the, uh, the beginning during the Feast of Trumpets, the beginning of that cycle. And then you have the spring. Okay, so, but this is a calendar. So we do need to understand the difference because there are two beginning points throughout the year. And the calendar would be in the month of Abib, just like it is written in Exodus 20, 12, 2. Now, how many seasons are there according to the Bible? Um, well, let's, let's find out through Genesis 22, uh, or actually 822. And we'll read, and it reads, uh, while the earth remains, seed time and harvest, cold and heat, winter and summer, and the, and the day and night shall not cease. So there is uh, two seasons that we're shown here, the winter and the summer. Winter is defined as autumn as well. So there's like a, uh, it's connected, autumn and winter are connected according to the scripture. The season in which fruits are gathered is commonly includes also winter. And uh, thus the summer and autumn make up the whole year according to Um, uh, this uh, Jusinus lexicon. On the Strong's, it reads the crop gathered, um, the autumn season, figure to um, ripeness of age, cold winter. Okay. So, and then we have the summer on the Jusinius, reads it as harvest of fruits, summer, as being the time of the year when the fruits are gathered. Uh, and the strong definition has as harvest, where the products, grain, fruit, dry season, summer. So the spring and the summer, and then we have the autumn and the winters. But in the, in, in, through the Bible sense, it's like they're, they're, they're second like a cod. Is they're, they're both combined into one, into two different seasons throughout the year. So this is what you will consider an antithetical point of view. It's uh, basically being in direct on unequivocal opposition, directing opposites or opposed. Um, and this is why in uh, Genesis 22, you have the seed time and the harvest, and you have the cold and the heat in the summer, and you have the summer and the winter and the day and the night. So you have the two opposites. Okay, and we see that of course throughout the Bible. light and darkness, right? And so um, we now go to the, um, what happened, just give you a quick summary of what happened um, during this time when, when, the, when the flood, why the flood happened, okay? So, I'm sorry that I, Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Let, I'll, before I do that, let me go ahead and give you some other scriptural references here. Uh, four scriptural references that uh, substantiate the, the last slide, which this will give you some, um, in, some additional scripture that uh, does have the um, antithetical um, seasons. Uh, here we have in Zechariah, um, we have um, in Zechariah, it reads, um, and I'll, I'll start halfway in between. Jerusalem, half of them to the Eastern Sea and half of them to the Western Sea. It shall continue in summer as in winter. And then you have in the Psalms 74, 17, you, shall, you have fixed all boundaries of the earth. You have made summer and winter. Again, we see that again. Isaiah 16, 6, and the birds of prey will, with, I'm sorry, will summer on them and the beasts of the earth will winter on them. And Amos 3, 15, I will strike the winter house along with the summer house. Okay. I just wanted to give you some scriptural reference. Don't just take my word for it. <laughs> um, 
All right. All right, so <clears throat> just a quick summary. In the account of Noah, the the uh, world grew so wicked. I mean, even people's hearts were just full with evil. Yahuwah decided to destroy all the life on the earth through the, the flood. The judgment uh, was impending because of the evil of the world. Even the animals were destroyed. He saved only one righteous man, Noah, and his family. Yahuwah instructed him to build an ark to carry his family and a large collection of different animals to safety. The flood cleansed the world of much evil, and Yahuwah offered mankind through Noah a new start. So in Genesis 5.28, Lamech lived 182 years, and his son, and, he, and his name was Noah, saying, The one will comfort us concerning our work and the tool of our hands. Because of the group, so because of the ground which Yahuwah has cursed. Now this one shall bring, re, uh, according to verse 29, this one shall bring us comfort, relief. Whereas in opposition, you have the Canaanite Lamech that um, sought uh, to um, redress wrong through revenge. Okay. And according to Genesis uh, 4.26, but then they have the uh, Lamech from the line of Adam, father of Noah, looked in hope to Yahuwah to provide the seed through whom comes deliverance through the curse. And that deliverance is through Yahushua. Now, um, Lamech named this, uh, his son Noah, as right on 526, it points out the name to give rest uh, or comforter. For he would give them rest from our work and toil of our hands because, because of the ground that was cursed by Yahuwah. Noah is a reflection of Yahushua, who said, Come to me, all of you who labor and are uh, heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So Noah was a type of Yahushua um, that... You know, this is the ark, and we know that um, uh, according um, to, uh, to Peter, we have a judgment that is, is, is not going to be by flood, but by fire. So we're going we're gonna to see, we're going to have to be in that ark, in the ark of the, you know, the covenant. We have to be in the covenant of Yahushua if we're going to survive the second judgment. That is to come. So Noah was considered a righteous man, and his faith uh, was seen because he was able to build the ark. You know, he, 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 his faith was shown by his obedience to do what Yahuwah told him to do. As we also today, we need to be obedient to what he says, so we can also be saved. So we have the prophetic name of Noah. Uh, the verb Noah means to come to rest or to cease. Uh, it means quietness or quiet attitude. Um, this verb denotes a coming to rest, usually after a period of unrest and mobility, just like it happened before the flood. There was unrest and um, rest did come after. It is used to indicate the end of a journey according to Genesis 8.4, or the camping of any army and even the resting of a spirit upon someone. Okay. And we can see that there are um, parallels. I mean, we see that there, uh, during, the, uh, during the flood when finally land, I mean, the, the the, 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 the spirit hover over the waters and then all of a sudden the land appeared just like in back in Genesis this spirit hovered over the water and then there was creation so you see these uh, things being replicated because Yahuwah is of cycles he the way of doing things is the same and um, in so many different ways uh, but cleansing came so you this was actually a second flood 
there was darkness before creation. There was something that happened that brought darkness into the world that needed to be cleansed. And so now we're seeing this again. But this one was because of the evil hearts of men. So um, the prophetic name of Noah shows a rest after the flood. Noah received salvation from him and his family because he was able to have faith and do as Yahuwah had instructed him. Uh, this goes to show that those who are obedient shall be delivered. Now, did Noah begin to work on the first day of the week? Let's read what Genesis uh, um, 7, 1, and we'll, we'll just go verse by verse here. Uh, Yahuwah said to Noah, come into the ark, you and all your household, because I have seen that you are a righteous, you are righteous before me in this generation. Um, so, so Noah was taken into the ark. Uh, so he would be given the instructions of what to do for the next few days before the flood came. Noah needed to start putting in the animals in the ark on a workday, of course, because Shabbat was not established in Mount Sinai. Shabbats were established on creation. We know that Yahuwah rested from all his works. And as we emulate our creator, as he created us, we too had had two days of rest. And this was actually seen before even the covenant was ratified. You can hear some say, well, Shabbat did not um, exist before, but they did. Um, and that, that's actually a scene because Shabbat was made for man, not man for the Shabbat. So uh, the whole world is supposed to eventually keep Shabbat. Um, and draw them into covenant, draw them into um, being grafted and so they can even be more fruitful um, being, um, you know, keeping all the feast and all that as well. So I won't go into that though. <laughs> so then we have, uh, so, um, so what we have here, Yahuwah uh, commanded Noah to start loading up um, on, um, which I'm, I'm still doing a study on this. There is another viewpoint. Uh, which I may bring, may bring forth, but I'm still working on the study of which day of the week this happened. We know the year already. Uh, we know the duration, the timeline and all that, but which day of the week? That's, 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 um, that's also, I believe, very, pretty important as well. And we'll, we'll, we'll see some connections, but I've seen some connections in, in a couple of the two different uh, studies. On Genesis 7-2, you can see what he had to do during this seven-day period. Um, well, of course, one of them had to be a Shabbat, so he had to work six days, not, not the seven, you know, all seven. So you have here, take a clean, uh, take a seven of each clean animal, male and female, two of each animal that are unclean, male and female, male with female. Also, seven um, each of the birds of the air, male and female, to keep the species alive on the face of all the earth. And then on Genesis 7, 4, for after... Not seven, but not seven more days, but after seven more days, I will cause it to rain on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. And I will destroy it from the face of the earth all living things that I have made. Now, um, so what does, so what are we looking at here? We're looking at, um, um, we're looking at Yahuwah giving Noah the orders to start filling up the ark, okay? And, and then the flood would come. Now, we can, and, and, all, the, and the, on the, all this happened when Noah was, uh, you know, uh, 600 years old when the floods ended up coming after seven more days. So this is, like I said, this is, this is something that, this was one perspective, um, I'm still, which I'm still studying the day of the week. Um, but in regards to this, um, you have, you have a, um, here is when he was given the instructions on, I believe it was either the first day or Shabbat, okay? Uh, there's all the variables that we have to consider when looking at this. It has to be, um, 
in harmony with the rest of the scripture as well. So what we have here, the flood didn't commence until the seventh day after Yahuwah had commanded Moses to place the animals birds of, uh, in the ark. Now, uh, there's a comment, commentator, um, Adam Clark, I'm sure many of you know. He said, God spoke this words probably on the seventh day. Uh, and I can see why you would think that. It's because he gave the order for them to start working during this time. Okay. So you have seven days to, um, well, six days to work. And then on the seventh day would, all, would also be a Shabbat. Okay, so a Shabbat, seven days, and then a Shabbat again when the flood started. Uh, so, it's, so it was more reasonable that they would have done this by the time the floods have come. Uh, and um, and Yahuwah works, you know, like I said, in, in a cycle of seven days. There's labor, so Yahuwah um, gave them or provided for them six days to do all their work, and then the rain and then the rain came. Okay, um, if if he did it on the first day. We could see that Noah could have had started work on the first day of the week already. And then the rain came. And then the first day would have been of the week would have been the flood that came. That also is a very probable, and I, I may lean to that as well. Be, uh, more may, well, I'm, I'm still, I still look at, I have some other areas of the scripture I'm, I'm still looking at, but um, like I said, this is. Um, this is one scenario. Okay. Now, um, so what happened after that? We, then we have 40 days and 40 nights of rain. So we have on, the, um, like I said, oh, he was 600 years of age when, when, when the floods came. Uh, on the second month, on the 17th day of the month. And on that day, the fountains of the great deep were broken up and the windows of heaven were open. It must have been an amazing scene. Um, so, and then the floods were on the earth 40 days and 40 nights. Uh, the waters increased and lifted up the ark and it rose above the earth. Uh, so what does that remind us of? I mean, if you, um, if you look at um, what happened the day after Shabbat when Yahusha was raised up in the heavens, right? That happened on the eighth day, on the on the first day of the week. Uh, raised. So these are key words. We have to pay attention to all these little details because these are very, very important um, as well. The ark was raised 40 days. What happened after Yahushua was raised? 40 days happened. And then 10 days later, they had the spirit that came above. Uh, so it just it does allude to that as well. So what do we have? The waters prevailed after 50 days. In Genesis 7:24, the waters prevailed for 150 days. Um, on Genesis 8:3, it reads, "And the waters receded continually from the earth, and the and at the end of 150 days, the waters decreased." The uh, then the ark rested. And we see that that word rested, uh, which is Strong's 5117, also um, is the root word for the name Noah. Yeah, and no coincidence there. And it happened on the seventh month, <laughs> uh, which is the um, our Shemitah, you know, or the day of rest of the land. It's, the, it's just a, a, it's wonderful how Yahuwah has you know, put all this together, how it, um, not just the name, but the words he used, he used the seventh month, which, um, which, you know, is a rest. Um, even, even the, the, um, the trumpet is, um, uh, is blown before, uh, the rest of the land, like right before the, the jubilee or the, as, as we approach the jubilee. So we have the 17th day of the month and the mountains of Ararat and the waters decreased continually until the 10th month and the 10th month. And on the first day of the month, the tops of the mountains were seen. So we have the word receded and decreased. The interesting fact, um, as I said, we have these, um, 
these names and, and words that Yehoah uses is just amazing. Now, the respective span of 150 days is shown to begin with the 17th day of the second month. And at the end of the 17th day of the seventh month, so we have 150 days between those two timelines. Actually, we have 151 days <clears throat> between those two timelines. Um, if you were to count every single day in between that those days and in between. So, um, but the 150 days <clears throat> was when the water started receding, the decreasing from the earth. So when that when it hit at its highest point. Then on the 150th day is when they started decreasing. Okay. And we'll go a little bit more into the definition of the words. So that way, it'll be a little bit more clear. So it is very clear that by these uh, two dates of the month cycles are exactly, there's exactly a 30-day interval in between because you have 150 days that is divisible by 30, equaling five months. And it only works on this calendar. And I'll, we'll do some figures in a little bit and see if, if it even comes close to other calendars. All right, so we have the, the word receded and decreased. And so the word receded, a shub, verb meaning turn to turn, to go back, to withdraw, to bring back, to reestablish. Uh, to um, to take to restore, flow waters are returning back. Just, uh, it, it, just like it receded continually, decreased in volume. Okay, just and then you have decreased uh, is uh, the verb indicating lacking to be needing to decrease, indicating a diminution of flood waters, just like in Genesis eight three. The waters receded and decreased enough by the end of hundred and fifty days, and as a result, the ark rested on the following day, which was the 17th day of the seventh month. So until the 16th, this is what happened. The next day is when the ark rested. And it also happened to fall during the Feast of Tabernacles, which is another interesting fact. All right, so we have the duration of the years divided by month. So we have, so we already know that there is 150 days between the 17th day of the second month to the 17th day of the, of the um, seventh month. So we have 150 days. Well, let's go ahead and take a look at um, some calendars that many of you already know and see through math um, if they um, match what the scripture says. Okay, so we have a solar year. It's about 365 and a quarter days. Um, that's why we have a leap year every four years. So we have a solar year that equals in the average of just about three and a half days. I'm sorry, 30, 30 days and a half per month. So on a five month period, we're looking at 152 days. So that does not equal to 150. Lunar year um, and lunar month. So what do we have? Lunar month, as we know, is between 29 to 30. So it's about 29, it varies. Um, so that's 147 uh, if we were to use lunar months to calculate uh, this uh, timeline. So we're short by two and a half days, approximately, if we were to use the lunar months or a lunar solar month, you could also even say. Um, so their months would not add up to what the Bible says. And then we have the Enoch, which is 364. Um, and this was a hundred, this equals to 151 and a half days. So that again does not equal 150 days. So, you know, and, and some may say, well, it's 151. Well, even then it doesn't even equal to that even. So there, there are 
discrepancies as you can see. It is not equal to that at all. Uh, but there is a calendar that it does, and that is the actual calendar that was ratified at the mountain. And this was 360 day calendar with exactly 30 days per month, you know, in a 12 month period. I'm oh, sorry, 30 days times 12 is 360 days. Uh, and so if you take 30 times five, it's 150 days exactly, just like the Bible says. These right here, we try to inject this information into the Bible, but the needle breaks. You cannot add something that is not set apart into the scripture without having the scripture itself rejected. So as we can see, there are no substantial evidences that this is going to hold up at all. It would have to be 100. It, it's 150 is 150 days, just like the Bible says. And it was a five month period. So it works on this calendar, whereas the other ones do not. And do we live in a 365 day year? Absolutely, we do. That's a reality, but we do know that times were changed during the time of Hezekiah around 700 BC. Um, there was a, a disalignment of the moon, the sun. There's a lot of things that happened. Uh, there is a lot of um, civilizations during that time who had to restructure their calendars because of this change that happened in the heavens. So it wasn't just recorded in the Bible. It was recorded in extra biblical resources as well. So there are um, scriptural witnesses that only work with a 360-day calendar. Uh, we have Daniel, we have more than this, but Daniel 725, Revelation 11.3 and 11.5 times and times and a half. We have, um, we have the 1,260 days. We have 42 months. Okay, we're talking about the same timeline here. Okay. So again, we, we can go ahead and, and scrut scrutinize this using other calendars, see if this works. Um, on Daniel and Revelation, we have uh, the count 42 months is equal to 1260 days. And uh, if we use the solar year, uh, 365, well, after three and a half years, this is how many days you, you sh you'll have. So that doesn't work, right? Then you have on the lunar year or lunar month year, you have 1,240 days, not 1,260. So that's short 60 days, I mean, um, 20 days. And then you have uh, Enoch, which is 364, and that doesn't work because that would be 1,273 days. So again, I mean, these, these are calculations, simple math that um, can be understood not to work if you just add them up. And then you have the calendar the, um, that is uh, taught here, and, and which is a 360-day um, year based on you know, and 30 day months. So that does add up. So 30 days times 42 is 1260 days. Um, we have the, we have a prophecies here that are that have to come to pass, and and we have in Matthew. But in the days of Noah, as in the days of Noah. Noah were, so also will be the coming of the Son of Man. There is a restoration that will be taking place, not just the 12 tribes, but the restoration of what being able to allow us to, to uh, enjoy his feast in the same months and the same days, enjoy and, and do things according to his will. So there's a restoration of understanding with wisdom, the scripture, so we may be able to walk in his instructions according to what he wants, not what man wants. So that's also why you're gonna see so much division out there. And, and is calendar important at the end of the day? Well, absolutely it is, it's covenant. It's part of the ratified covenant. And, and how else are we going to live in one accord and one mind if we don't even keep the same Shabbats? Of, of, there are ministries that keep Shabbats even, you know, through the middle of the week and changes every month. And so, 
we, we don't want to be disaligned. Um, we want to be aligned with scripture. And um, did changes happen? Absolutely. Yahuwah can do that, and he has done that. So, um, but, but it is our job to press in, keep his covenant commandments as, as and using the, the signs and the markers as, as according to scripture, and not lean in our own understanding, but acknowledge in all his ways, and he will keep our calendar straight <laughs> and our path straight as well. All right, brothers and sisters, I hope you all enjoy this teaching. This was my um, last thing I wanted to go over with you. Um, so this is just a quick review if you have any questions or comments. Um, so we went over the death of Methuselah, um, how uh, it happened uh, right at the, the, the time when Noah was, was 600 and the flood started. Um, and we have the flood began after the vernal equinox uh, or spring to Kufa. Then we have the two annual seasons. You have your winter and your summer. Uh, the flood began on the seventh day, or did it begin on the first day? Still working uh, on that study. Then you have 40 days and 40 nights. The waters receded, decreased. Um, and that was done before um, the 17th, the day before. Um, compare the length of the years and the months of other calendars. And as we went over to, you know, with some of the calendars that are out there right now. And, uh, and we saw that they didn't, that didn't hold up water, no pun intended, with, um, with Noah's, uh, you know, months and how the duration of them. So we have a 360 day year as seen in Daniel Revelation. Of course, it's our future, future events, which uh, I, I truly believe that this will have to happen before these prophecies will come to pass. Um, so, let's, so it's good to be watchful for this time to change back. All right, well, may all of you be richly blessed on this wonderful Shabbat. And if you have any questions or comments, please feel free. And remember, if you haven't signed up, sign up at tourtothetribes.com forward slash connect. Join us every week. And um, we'll fellowship, we'll, we'll talk, midrash, whatever we need to do <laughs> to uh, sharpen each other with the word. Well, blessings to all of you, and may everyone have a blessed Shabbat.